Is there a perfect speaker in any given language? I don't know, but I doubt it. If you know someone who speaks any language perfectly, please introduce me to them. I'd like to host them on my channel. Hello, my name is Alhan, and today I would like to share with you my thoughts on how we can improve the languages that we already speak. This point is very important to me personally in my own career as a language interpreter. But I'm sure that all of us as human beings will benefit tremendously if we improve our communication skills, which a lot of it happens through language. First of all, we need to identify our level in the language that we would like to improve. I'm sure there are many ways you can find out what level you are in the language that you are planning to improve, but for now, for simplifying it, let's categorize it into three categories. The first one is being a beginner in the language. The second category is being intermediate in the language. And the third one is being advanced in the language. And then we will look into being a native speaker of the language. Yes, I think even native speakers have always some room to improve their language skill. For each of these levels, we can look into four aspects in which we can improve our skills. These four areas are reading, writing, listening or comprehension, and speaking. Now let's look into some suggestions to improve those four aspects in each one of these levels. I think it's best if you pick one thing to focus on in each one in these areas and then add to it. So even if I'm giving you more than one suggestion, choose one of them at first. For the beginners, how can a beginner improve their reading? I suggest reading more children's books. It's very important at first to get that sense of achievement when you are trying to learn something or understand something. So challenge yourself, but not to the extent that would make you feel, I can't do this. So children's books come in different levels too. Some books have fewer words, some books have more words. So see what level you're at. And if it's something that's very easy for you, go to the next level. Second is writing. At this stage, I suggest that you write what you are reading. So the book that you decide to read, simply just copy it and write it so that your muscles are getting used to writing these words, memorizing the spelling and practicing writing. Listening and speaking, in my opinion, are very interwined and interconnected. So you can do one thing for both of them. Listen to something you like. And here I suggest again, children's rhymes. Listen to a rhyme a few times. If it's difficult for you to understand the words, find the lyrics, write the words, and then start singing along and memorizing the words. When I was first learning French, memorizing songs was one of the best ways that have helped me improve in my language skills. Moving on to the intermediate speaker of the language. Reading. Again, just like a child would advance from children's books to the young adult books or graphic novels, that's what I suggest that you start reading. If you have difficulty choosing the books that would benefit you in the level that you're at, I suggest going into any public library around you and asking the librarian for help. Writing. At the intermediate level, I think that now we are able to write things that are not immediately in front of us. So we should be able to produce some sentences. That's why my suggestion is write a letter to a friend, write an email to a friend, writing text messages to some people in the language that you're trying to improve. Make sure that you don't jump into writing slangs at this point, because many of us, when we write text messages, we tend to shorten some words or use numbers sometimes instead of letters. So let's not do that at this stage, or maybe never. Next is again, listening and speaking. My focus at this stage would be finding a conversation group, whether it's in person, which is my preference. If that's not possible for you, a virtual conversation group should help as well. So what you can do in this stage is 
have a chance to listen to two people talking, try to understand that, and then ask them to give you a chance to relay back to them what they were talking about. That's one way to check that your understanding of their conversation was accurate. Then you engage in a conversation about a similar topic with one of those people. So maybe a smaller group even would be more beneficial so you would get a chance to speak more often. In this stage, we see that we're not just repeating like we did in the beginner's level, which was just memorizing and repeating. Rather, here we are trying to produce the language more, whether it's in a form of writing or in a form of speaking it, if you're an advanced speaker of the language. For reading, I would suggest for you to, again, go to the library, ask the librarian for the next level after the book that you've read. Ask them, what's the next book that I can read that would be more challenging than this one? See the options out there. One suggestion that I would have is actually finding someone in high school level or even middle school. See where you are with your level. Ask them to lend you some of the textbooks that they had, whether it's in geography, social sciences, mathematics, even language. See where you are compared to someone who's in school. In this way, I think you'd be able to improve your general knowledge about different aspects that native speakers know of or learn in school. Let me share with you one of the challenges that I faced as a non-native speaker of English. I'm sure you can realize that from my accent. After I immigrated to Canada, I realized that there were things that children knew in terms of vocabulary that I didn't. And these vocabulary that they were using, either they learned it from other children while playing or from textbooks. Because my education was in Arabic, I did not learn the simple scientific terms when it comes to things that we learn in primary school, like the cycle of water or like the solar system. All this general knowledge information, I knew it in Arabic. So it's a good thing to actually have a look at textbooks and make sure that we have that. The next thing is writing. Whatever we have learned in intermediate, we need to make sure that we perfect it now. So if we are writing a letter to a friend, we need to make sure that our grammar is very correct, that our punctuation is there, that we are using the capital letters or small letters when we need to, depending on the language. So in Arabic, we need those dots. Sometimes even native speak speakers might make mistakes of forgetting the dots sometimes. So focusing on grammar, spelling, punctuation, the general structure of the sentence. Many times I find myself using sentence structures in English that I've actually translated in my head from Arabic or Persian, my two native languages. So here we need to try and make sure that what we're using is actually used by native speakers or it is the way the language is spoken. And I also see that with any speaker of a second or third language that I know that they say things that I can't say is wrong, but it's actually not the way it's said in the language. These are the little nuances that we need to make sure we are improving here. When it comes to listening and speaking, one of the things that I suggest is interviews and podcasts. Why? Because the interviewer asks the guest a question. I think it's a very good opportunity for you to pause the, what you're listening to or what you're watching, answer it first, record yourself, and then go back and listen to yourself and then listen to what the guest is saying. So here you're practicing both speaking and listening. Now that we're done with the three main levels, maybe there is a fourth level or a category for itself to be a native speaker of the language. And even as a native speaker, we have different levels. We can be a native speaker of a language, but we're not educated in this language. Or we can be a native speaker of a language and have the education in that language. Or we can speak a language very well because we're educated in it, because it's in our society, but it's not the first language that we learned at home. So in this case, we're also considered a native speaker in that language. 
For example, even though I started learning Arabic when I was four, by entering school, it became my strongest language because it was the language of playing with other children, the language of the society I was living in, and the full language of schooling. So even mathematics and science was all in Arabic. As native speakers of any language, we always have room to improve. Always. That's why I sometimes become hesitant in learning a new language, even though there are a few languages that I'd really like to learn, because I always tell myself, if I have time to invest in learning a language, I should maybe invest that time in improving the languages that I already speak. What do you think about that? Share your thoughts with me in the comment section. I think as native speakers, now we are able to communicate with people on a day-to-day -day basis, we use the language when we see another native speaker, but there might be one area or another or a few of them that we need to strengthen ourselves in. For example, I speak Persian at home. I understand it in social settings, but because I've never actually been to a Persian speaking country, there are many things I could say that are not the way it's actually said by native speakers. So one way I could improve that is by spending more time talking to people who actually live in a Persian speaking country. And in my case, it would be Iran. So one way for me to improve my Persian in that sense is to speak to people who actually live there or have lived there enough that they would pick on my little mistakes when it comes to sentence structure or the usage of words. That's one area I need to improve myself in. Another area is that I have not done my schooling in Persian. So when it comes to science and geography and history, I do not have the terminologies in Persian. So if someone asks me to translate something from English or Arabic to Persian, that would be really difficult for me to do versus doing it from Persian to Arabic. And even then, it would have to be written. However, I have been training myself to interpret in Persian when it comes to the medical field. And that happened in a very coincidental way. It was a mere coincidence that my supervisor found out I actually am a native speaker of Persian. So my supervisor just added Persian to the list of the languages I speak. And right after that phone call with her, I started receiving medical calls in Persian. And I cannot tell you how difficult that was because I was not used to mentioning names of diseases in Persian or even knowing them. So that has been an amazing learning process for me. So taking those four aspects in mind, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, I can give you examples of what I would like to improve in myself when it comes to improving my native language. Reading. I would like to improve my literature reading in Persian. Understanding poetry better, being able to even read it better, reading novels. So that's an area I would like to work on. When it comes to writing, for example, I do not know if I will use writing that much in Persian on a professional level. Yes, I'm a Persian translator, but I have translated from English or Arabic to Farsi less than five times throughout my career. So I would not accept tasks that would require of me to translate into Persian. Translating from Persian into English and Arabic would be easy. My writing is limited to writing text messages, maybe emails here and there. I'm not sure that's an area I would like to focus on at this point. But if I do, maybe copywriting in Persian would be something I would like to focus on. When it comes to listening and speaking, I would like to keep focusing on what I'm doing already right now, which is my interpreting. So in my interpreting, most of my calls are medical interpreting. I'm trying to improve myself in the terminologies that are used in Persian. And also sometimes I get calls from insurance companies or banks. That also an area that I would like to focus on and improve. I think we always need to remind ourselves why we are learning what we're learning. We need to have a clear idea in our heads 
as to why we want to improve our language skills. Why, as a native speaker of Persian, I would like to improve my medical terminologies in Persian. I would be very happy to see what you think about this. Would you learn a language or specific skills in a language that you might never use? I'm curious about that. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share, and hope to see you in the next video.